In this video, I'm gonna talk you through how to do a chest fly. Okay, welcome back to some of you who have been here before and hello to any newbies onto my channel. First of all, make sure you check out my playlist of how to's and fitness tips because there's a whole load of exercises there and I'll be adding to them regularly as well, so hopefully it helps you. Today's video is gonna be all about the chest fly and this is one of my favorite exercises and a very common, old, regularly used exercise for building pecs, your chest. The first thing I want to touch upon is the anatomy. It's really important to understand the anatomy of the muscles that you're working. In a bodybuilding style or a bodybuilding environment, it's really important to know the range of motion, the origin insertion of the muscles or the muscle group that you're working because that's what bodybuilding is all about, putting those muscles through their range of motion whilst under load or whilst lifting weight. So when it comes to your chest or your pec muscles, let's keep this really basic and easy. Your pecs originate in your sternum, your upper ribs, across the middle here, as you probably well know, it's obvious, and inserts on your upper humerus, which is the, the top of your upper arm, just underneath the shoulder. That's important to know, because we're gonna talk about the range of motion and the line of motion of your pectorals. The chest fly exercise, whether done with dumbbells, cables, or a machine, is a great opportunity to take the muscle through a large range of motion compared to sometimes in a pressing exercise, you may be limited in that range of motion. So keep the anatomy in your mind when doing any exercise in a resistance training format because that's going to increase the effectiveness and the ability for you to really get that exercise right because you're gonna know the shape, the direction, and the length and the range of motion that you need to do to make that exercise right. Okay, so with all of that in mind, in the chest fly, you wanna try and create that full extension from the upper arm to the, to the midline of the chest. Now the first thing that I see people do in the gym is trying to get that length from the length of the arm. So, now that we know that the insertion is the top of the upper arm, the lengthening of the elbow doesn't actually matter. The lengthening of the elbow is gonna get more bicep work from the lengthening here. You could actually increase the, the bend in your elbow whilst getting the elbow back to get the length in the upper arm, to see what I mean. And often people injure themselves by lifting too heavy and lengthening their arms long and actually increasing damage in their ligaments by increasing the lever length and lifting too heavy. With that being said, it's not bad to lengthen the arm and get the bicep working with the chest as well, as, it, as it's a one complete movement. But you can try it yourself from this position bend the elbow and drop the elbow down low, you will still feel a stretch in the chest compared to arms out here. You still feel a stretch in the chest, but the load has increased because the lever has increased. So play around for you. You'll feel benefits in both, but remember, don't lift so heavy with your arms out wide. You can start with a bent elbow and get the stretch in your chest still. Okay, and the next mistake I see is in the flexion, the finishing of the exercise, especially when you're tired. Now that we know the anatomy and that the insertion is on the top of the upper arm, we know that to get the fullest flexion, the full range of motion, you have to finish with your upper arm crossing the midline of the body. You can you do that yourself right now. You, it's easy to tense your pecs. However, do it here with your elbow out and your hand coming in, it's harder. You do it, but it's harder compared to elbow coming across the body. When you're tired, especially on cables, but the dumbbells as well, I see this. So, as you get tired, this becomes harder, and the hands meet each other, because you think that's the goal, but the elbows are still really out wide. So yeah, you're still working, but not to your full capacity, and the exercise is not that efficient or effective. You need to finish with your elbows. Your hands don't even need to bounce into each other, the, your focus should be elbows in this exercise, not hands. Whether you're on a cable machine, or dumbbells, or a machine, your, your focus is your elbows meeting each other. How close can you get your elbows towards each other to get that contraction in your pecs? I could do this, hands meeting each other, elbows out wide, and it's not gonna be anywhere near as effective as elbows closing together. You do it right now at home, you can feel the difference. So, we've been on a flat bench here, which is a great way to work all the way across your pecs. However, if you wanted to work the upper portion of your pecs in a fly exercise, 
you'd move the bench to an incline or if you're using cables you do a low to high cable fly. If you wanted to work the lower portion of your pecs then you do a decline bench chest fly or on the cables you do a high to low cable fly. And a tip with not just this exercise but with all exercises in the gym, we are looking to be uncomfortable and in pain but in a good way. You should feel the pain in the muscles and the burn, not pain in the joints and an uncomfortable feeling. So remember, weightlifting is good, heavy lifting is good, but only if it feels good for you. A lighter weight and a good technique is always the priority because you can connect your mind to a good contraction and a good squeeze and sometimes I find when I reduce the weight just a little bit I can get a much better set than going a little bit heavier struggling through. So find that balance for you, don't be afraid of everybody else in the gym, you're there for you and nobody else. So do the weight that you find most appropriate for you and focus on your workout. Okay so that's the chest fly. I think I've spoken about all the most important things, but if you've got any questions then leave a comment underneath and I'll get back to you. I really hope that's helped you, especially if you're on one of my CrossFit programs, um, then it really gives you context of the training that you've been doing and that I've been setting you, so I really hope that helps. And if you're interested in following one of my training programs, then go check them out at alexcrockford.com. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. There is plenty more coming soon. See you later.